Hello, welcome to Higher Ground Gaming. This is Eric. Tonight we're going to play another game from the 1978 Red Sox replay using Stratomatic Baseball. Mr. Brody, Brody is getting ready to get into his co-host seat there. And uh, we're going to be broadcasting another game. They're going to be taking on the um, Oakland Athletics, as you can see here. And this is game number 130. Hold on there. Just give me a second here. While we bring up our schedule here. Again, this is almost... Uh, let's see here. No, not almost. <laughs> Never mind on that one. So let's get the date here. It's September... I want to say September 3rd. I think it's September 3rd. Could be wrong. Could be September 2nd. But I think it's September 3rd. Let's see here. Yes, it's September 3rd of 1978, and the Red Sox have won four games in a row. They are just one and a half game behind the first place New York Yankees, who are, um, say, one and a half games ahead of them, and one game ahead of the Milwaukee Brewers, who just dropped out of first place recently. Uh, the Yankees have won two in a row. The uh, Milwaukee has lost three in a row. So things are tightening up in the AL East. And today we're going to have, as you can see here, Steve Rinko, who later pitched with the Red Sox for the um, Oakland Athletics against Jim Wright for the Boston Red Sox. You can see up top here, it's a lousy day to play baseball. So this could be an interesting day with uh, Jim Wright on the hill. So we're going to have the Red Sox are really going to have to get some uh, good production out of their lineup. Um, as Jim Wright is okay, but... Definitely not one of their better pitchers. So, anyway, without further ado, whoops, why did we do that? Without further ado, let's get this game underway. Ready, Mr. Brody? Mr. Brody's got purple dinosaur there. And we're ready to go. Welcome to the stadium for today's ball game. Alrighty, as you can see that the weather has changed to a good day, probably because I accidentally closed the game and reopened it. That, so, uh, <laughs> so maybe that changed the weather there. So we're just going to say that the, uh, the there, well, this is New England, so anything can happen. It can go from a bad day at one moment, and then all of a sudden, within a matter of hours or even sometimes minutes, the weather can change. So weather is known to be very fickle around here, so... We'll go with that. As you can see, we are playing the game at Fenway. So Jim Wright enters the game with an 8-8 eight eight record. He was 8-4 and four in the actual season, so he's got a few more losses already. 4.81 earner on average. Um, so his ERA is a little over a run worse. With 101 innings pitched, has allowed 144 hits, so a worse ratio there. With 25 walks already eclipsing his total for the season. And 53 strikeouts. And he's given up almost twice as many home runs. So he has not had a good year. And But we'll see if we can get a victory here and at least uh, get to his win number nine. So in this game, the Red Sox did win 11-6, to but he did not get a decision in the game. And in fact, he pitched. Let's see how long he pitched. He pitched 
just two and a third innings, allowing five runs. So, and so we'll see if he can do better this time. So the defense behind right is going to be Rice and left, Lynn and center, Evans and right. Evans is back in after a few days off. Hobson, Burleson, Brohammer, and Scott, Jerry Remy is still out of the lineup. Uh, and Carlton Fisk behind the plate. Now we probably will do what we continue to be doing uh, since the month of September started is to uh, eventually take out Butch Hobson around the fifth or sixth inning, probably probably a little bit earlier rather than later, um, you know, and put it in a, a better defensive player. So we've been moving Brohammer from second um, when he ha- when Brohammer has been playing over to third, and then putting in Jerry Remy because Jerry Remy is available. He just hasn't started the last few games. So that is our strategy. So hopefully we can uh, get the Red Sox into the postseason, and that will help. So the Oakland A's lineup is as follows. Del Austin, the right fielder, will bat first. Dave Revering, the first baseman, hits second. Rico Cardi, who's having a monster year at the plate, uh, especially home run-wise, um, is the DH today. Batting cleanup, Mitchell Page, the left fielder. Batting fifth, Bruce Robinson behind the plate. Mario Guerrero, the shortstop, will hit sixth. Uh, I always get his name. Tony, Tom Duncan? Taylor Duncan. The third baseman hits seventh. Joe Wallace, the center fielder, will hit eighth. And Mike Edwards, the second baseman, bats ninth. So that's your lineup for the visiting Oakland Athletics. Red Sox, as you said before, have won four in a row, going for win number five. So... Hobson and Scott will play in on the grass for Alston. All right, looks into the side of fist. Here's the wind-up in the pitch. It's going to be off the three call. And that'll be a line out to Brohammer. And that's how we'll begin. So that'll bring up Dave Revering, the first baseman. Comes in hitting 240 with 13 homers and 46 runs bat- batted in. Matching his total for the season. It's going to be off the five column, which is where you want to be if you're a Red Sox fan on Jim Wright's card. And it's going to be a range check on Fisk. Fisk is excellent range. Well, he's a one. So it's going to be a pop-up. And Fisk will call for it and make the catch in fair territory. So two down now for Rico Cardi. Rico Cardi comes in hitting 301 with 37 homers, six better than he did on the actual season. Levy homered in the last game against the Red Sox. And 101 RBIs breaking his total for the season. Shield comes on with two outs and the base is empty. So here's the pitch to right. Oh, and right couldn't get a hold of one here. It's going to be off of his two column, which is a dangerous column. And he will go deep, 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 and Evans watches it go goodbye. So Rico Cardi now has 38 home runs on the season, so he continues his tear into September. So he's homering in back-to-back games now against the Red Sox and sets Oakland up with an early one nothing lead. So Mitchell Page up now. Comes in hitting two ninety nine with 17 homers, 68 runs batted in. He's equaled his home run total for the season and just two behind in, it, in his RBIs. And it's going to be on his three column. And Fisk is busy this inning as he makes the second catch. And that'll do it. But damage is done as Rico Cardi puts the Athletics on the board with a solo home run, his 38th of the year, for, to give them a one nothing lead. So Steve Renko gets an early lead here. He comes in with a 6-12 and record, which matches his record for the season. ERA about one run worse with a 5.23 earn on average, 148 innings pitched, 143 hits allowed, 67 walks, and 89 stri- 88 strikeouts. So number is really close overall, but he has given up twice as many home runs, giving up 20 so far as he did in the whole season. So he's pretty close. This is probably going to be his last start of the season. So the red, uh, the defense behind Renko is going to be Page left, center, and Wallace in center, and Alston in right. Duncan, Guerrero, Edwards, and Revering. 
in the infield, left to right, and Robinson behind the plate with Rinko on the mound. Rinko uh, pretty awful at keeping runners on with a plus six, and Robinson average at throwing runners. I mean, yeah, average at throwing runners out with no adjustment at a zero. So the defense overall is below average range for the most part. With Wallace in center being average, Edwards at second being average, and Rinko on the hill being average. Pretty high error ratings all around for most of the players there, so good chance of them committing at least one error during the game at one point. Hopefully it will be to the Red Sox advantage. They can take advantage of it when it does happen. So the, the lineup for the Red Sox is going to be Rick Burleson, the shortstop will bat first. Freddie Lynn, the center fielder, hits second. Jim Rice, the left fielder, will bat third. Kai Shremsky is the DH today, batting cleanup. Carlton Fisk, behind the plate, bats fifth. The boomer George Scott hits sixth and plays first. Right fielder Dwight Evans, back in the lineup after a few days off, will hit seventh. Butch Hobson, the third baseman, bats eighth. And Jack Broner, getting a start at second for the ailing Jerry Remy, will bat ninth. So, Burleson steps into the box. He comes in hitting 278, 30 points higher than his average for the season with a homer and 41 runs batted in. He's had He's got 34 doubles, two more than he did on the actual season, and has almost doubled his triples total with nine. So, Rinko looks in for the sign from Robinson. He has to wind up in the pitch. And it's going to be off the two column, which is in Burleson's wheelhouse. Let's see what he can do with it. And Burleson, who's only got one home run of the year, will hit one high off the wall in center field. Just staying in the park. And Burleson will be on with a leadoff double, so a good start for the Red Sox as the tying run is on board. For F Freddie Lynn, comes in hitting 295 with 22 homers, 75 runs batted in, equaling his total for the home run total for the season, and has four more doubles than he did on the actual season. So it's going to be off the four column of Rinko. And that one is popped up the first. Rubbering calls for it. Makes a few steps to his right and makes the catch. So Burleson will have to hold at second. Then we have Jim Rice. He started to come out of his slump. Average back over 300 at 302. 37 homers and 110 runs batted in. So a chance for the red to tie the game here with a base set. It's going to be off the three column. And that's going to be a ground ball to Guerrero. He looks the runner back, fires the first. And, oh, it took a bad hop. Did he, was Russell able to advance? No. So it'll be up to Carly Stremski if Danny is to continue. Hitting 285 on the season, seven, 15 homers and 63 runs batted in. And that's going to be off the four call. And Stremski will draw the walk. So first and second now. So let's see if what Fisk can do. Fisk hitting 297 coming into the game. 16 homers and 72 runs batted in. And that'll be off the two call. And that's a ground ball back to the pitcher. Rinko fields it over to Revering, and that'll do it. So the Red Sox cannot take advantage of it. Oh, grounded to Revering. <laughs> Anyway, out number three. So after one full, it's Oakland one, Boston nothing. It'll be Robinson, Carrero, and Duncan up against right. So Rob Robinson comes in hitting 205 with two runs batted in. And it'll be off the two column. And he finds the single, the only hit on the, on the second column, and he finds it. So Scott will hold Rob Robinson on the corner. Corners are going to play in. So Hobson not, I mean, uh, Scott, I guess, not holding him on. So Miro Guerrero up now, threat to bunt here. He had a couple of sacrifices, I believe, in last game. And looks like he drops one down. Wright picks it up, fires to first, and he gets him by a step. So that'll get Robinson up in scoring position. So number seven hitter, Taylor Duncan. 253 on the season, three homers and 17 runs batted in. It's going to be off the two column. 
And he'll ground this one to Hobson. Picks it up. Looks Robinson back to second and fires the first for the out. So Joel Wallace up now. Joel Wallace hitting 252 with seven homers and 32 runs batted in. He's got more home runs than he has on the actual season. One more and six more RBIs. And hopefully Rice can, uh, Wright can get out of it here. No, and again, they find the only hit on the call. Oh, no, actually, there was another hit. But they'll hold Robinson at third. So I'd put runners at the corners for the number nine hitter, Mike Edwards. 275 with two homers, 26 runs batted in. Right kicks and delivers. Ooh, it's gonna get he's gonna get a good one to hit here. Let's see what he can do with it. And that's gonna be a range check on Brohammer. Rain Brohammer with a range of three, not as good as the Remy's. But it does he does get in front of this one. Oh, but he's gonna boot it. It rolls up his arm. And Robinson will come in to score. And Oakland takes a 2-0 lead now, so that run unearned. So top of the order, also not now. He lined out his first time up. And he's going to pop this one up the first. Scott waves him off. Rohammer off and makes the catch. But the Athletics score one on an unearned run, thanks to the error by Brohammer. And it's 2-0 as we head to the second. So the Boomer will bat first, number six hitter today, hitting 255 with 13 homers, 49 runs batted. He's got one more home run than he did on the actual season. And that's going to be a fly ball to center. Routine fly, Wallace ranges over and reaches up to make the catch. So let's check out some scores. Chicago leads Baltimore 1 nothing. Milwaukee on top of Texas 3 to 1. And Seattle leads New York. One nothing. So that's good news for the Red Sox with uh, Seattle ahead of New York. Milwaukee's still a half game ahead of them in the standings. So Toronto shutting out California for nothing. Detroit edging Kansas City one nothing. Minnesota blanking Cleveland five nothing. And here it's Oakland two nothing. So Dwight Evans back on the back in the lineup, hitting two forty six, twenty one homers, seventy five runs batted in. Has twelve more. RBIs and he did it in the entire 1978 season. And he'll be on with a leadoff with a one-out walk. So to bring up Butch Hobson, 278, 13 homers and 56 ribbies. And Hobson will get a good one to hit here, right in his wheelhouse. But he'll hit with this one right into the ground. Over to Edwards for one, back to first, double play. So Hobson gets one to hit, but just misses it. And Oakland turns two. So Oakland defense looking pretty good so far. It's the Boston defense that hasn't looked look so great. So Dave Revering up now with two outs and the base is empty. Oh, actually, no. Sorry. Dave Revering up now to hit the top of the third. He popped out his first time up. And this one is going to hit the center. Long fly. Lynn has a long run. But he gets there and hauls it in for out number one. So Rico Cardi started off the scoring for Oakland in the first with a solo home run. His 38th of the season. It's off the four column. And that's going to be a line drive to Hobson. Pretty weakly hit. So easily makes the catch for out number two. That'll bring up Page. He fouled out his first time out. And he hits this one in the center. Lynn circles under it and makes the play to end the inning. So Oakland goes 1-2-3 in the third, and it remains 2-0 as we head to the home half of the fourth, third. So Brohammer up now. See if he, what he can do, trying to atone for his error, which will allow to run the score. It's going to be off the sixth column. 
And he strikes out swing. Misses, missed that one by a mile. So one down now in the Red Sox third. Brings up top of the order. Burleson doubled his first time up to lead off the game, but was stranded there. This time draws the lock. Looks like Marinko is pitching around him. So the third walk given up by Brinko today. So Reverend will hold on Burleson. Fred Lynn popped up his first time up. Oh, just misses the skinny single as he lines one out to Edwards. For out number two. Jim Rice grounded out his first time up, comes to the plate. And he'll ground this one to Edwards. Flips over to Rivering, and that'll do it. So the Red Sox get no runs, one hit, and no errors, and one man left on base. And after three full, it's 2 nothing Oakland. So Robinson will lead it off. He singled his first time up. Came around the score on an error. It's going to be off the one column. Oh, and this one is going to be hit into the gap. Bounces around in the triangle. Robinson rounding second. Lynn has trouble picking it up, and it's going to be a stand-up triple. His first triple of the season. So Guerrero up now. He sacrificed bunt his first time up. And he's going to line one out to third. Hobson steps on the bag, and bingo. So... Right, very happy about that as that was lined right down Hob down the down the line. Hobson caught it right at the bag, stepped on it. Even though uh Robinson did not get that much of a lead, it wasn't it was a bang bang play. And there's a double play. So score that a three uh a five unassisted. So as we head to the fourth. I shoot so two down now. In the Oakland fourth. Brings up Taylor Duncan. Grounded out his first time out. And he'll ground this one to Burleson. Fires over to Scott. And that'll do it. So after three and a half, it remains 2 nothing Oakland. So Red Sox have managed just one hit so far off of Rinko. He has been pretty wild as he has walked three. That one hit was a leadoff double. Since then, he has retired... Well, he's not allowed any more hits. He hasn't retired that many in a row because he has allowed three walks. So the captain, Kyle Stremskip, now walked his time up. First time up. And he'll pop this one up. Guerrero calls for it and makes the catch. So one down in the Red Sox fourth brings up Fisk. He grounded out his first time up. And he'll ground out again. As Edwards makes the play over to Reverend for out number two. So Baltimore edging Chicago three to two. Milwaukee leads Texas now three to two as Texas has scored a run. Another one. Uh, the Yankees have increased their lead over Seattle. Uh, I mean, have taken the lead over Seattle four to one. So if this remains the same, the Red Sox will lose a game. So to bring up the boomer George George Scott with two down in the Red Sox fourth. He flew out his first time up. Gets one to hit here though, right in the wheelhouse. Let's see what he can do with it. And this one is hit a long way. Going, 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 and gone. So the boomer puts the Red Sox on the board with a shot to center. His 14th of the season. And the Oakland leaders have now two to one. So Evans up now. Walked his first time up. And he'll walk again. So Robinson goes out to talk to Rinko. He's back behind the plate. He brings up Hobson. He grounded it into a double play his first time up. And then it'll be a range check out to Page. A 1 through 11 will be a base hit. And that is going to fall in for a base hit. As Evans holds at second, so Red Sox have something going with two outs after this 
Home run by George Scott and now a couple of base hits. A walk and a base hit. So it'll be a Brohammer. Two outs. Runners on first and second. Gets a one in his wheelhouse here. And again, cannot do anything with it as he grounds out to his counterpart to end the inning. But the Red Sox do get on the board on the sol solo home run, number 14 for the Boomer. And it's a 2-1 game after four. So Joe Wallace leads it off for the A's in the fifth. Singled his first time up. And that's a strike at the knees. So Wright gets his Wright get his first K of the day. Mike Edwards reached on an error by Brohammer, which allowed a run to score. And this one's hit the center. Hit one what hit well. Lynn bolts after it. Lynn jumps for it and it bounds off the wall. And Edwards will be on in a Fenway Park double. So one out and run in scoring position for Edwards. I mean for Alston. Oakland trying to get the run back to the Red Sox scored. And Edwards is going to move away from second. 21 stolen bases on the season. And he's going to try to steal third here. He only has a 40% chance. We're going to throw for him. And he will be out by a mile. So I don't know what Edwards was thinking there. Trying to get in this to third with less than two out, I guess. But he's gunned down by Fisk for out number two. So that'll empty the bases now for Del Alston. Lined out in the first and popped out in the second. And that'll be a fly ball to right. Evans calls for it. And ends the inning. So it remains 2-1 halfway through. So the Red Sox will have the top of the order. Burleson. Lynn and Rice. up, And if anybody gets on Yastrzemski up against Rinko. Burleson doubled in the first and walked in the third. And he'll ground this one to Edwards. One through four will be a hit. And he gets in front of it. And makes the play over to Revering for out number one. Very lit up now. 0 for 2 on the day. Another play by Edwards. Range, another range check for Edwards. He'll get in front of this one also. And make the play once again over to Revering for out number 2. So Jim Rice up now. He's grounded out twice today. And fouling. And uh, pops it up sky high in front of the plate. Looks like it's drifting foul. And it goes into the stands. And this time he's back in the box. And hits one past the mound and past Guerrero into the outfield. So Rice is on with a two out single. His first hit of the day. Brings up Yastrzemski 0 for 1 with a walk. And he'll line this one to Edwards to end the inning. So after five full, it's still 2 1. Oakland. So Reverend will lead it off for the A's in the top of the sixth. Wright has settled down since the second. He's pitched three scoreless innings. So it'll be off the sixth column. And that's a ground ball at the Brohammer. Oh, and that's going to be a base hit. He makes an incredible stop, but has no position to make the throw. So they'll call that an infield single. So Rico Cardi. One for two with a home run. And he's going to line this one down the line to third. Hobson fires over to first and gets him. So Hobson turns another double play. This one more of an effort as he had to throw it across the diamond, but does so. So, two unconventional double plays, both involving Hobson. Remarkably, no errors. So, Page up now. P 
page hitless on the day. And he'll remain that way as he strikes out. So the A's go 1, 2, 3 in the 6 and it remains 2, 1. So this is probably going to be Hobson's last at bat if they get to him. If not, he'll most likely come out of the game. Unless the Red Sox can score a ton of runs in this inning. So it's going to be out to four column. Fisk is grounded out twice today. And this time he draws the walk. The fifth walk given up by Rinko. So far none of them have come back to haunt him yet. But we'll see what happens now. Is the boomer George Scott up now. He homered in his last at bat. And can he go back to back here? It's going to be off the three column. No, he lays it off for ball four. So back to back walks to start the sixth. The Red Sox are in business with nobody out. And it brings up Dwight Evans, who he himself has walked twice. Off the one column. Oh, and he hits this one. The Guerrero fires the second pawn back to first, and they turn two. So Oakland turns a double play of their own as Fist moves to third. So tying run is just 90 feet away, but now with two down. So let's check out the scores that we care about. Texas ahead of Milwaukee now, 6-3. to three. That's good news. And, however, the Yankees are still ahead of Seattle, 6-1. to one. So Hobson up now with two outs and runner on third. And Hobson's going to take this one. This one's going to go high up off the wall. Clangs the green monster. Fisk easily scores, and Hobson will wind up at second with a double. So Hobson gets his second hit of the day. Ties the game at two. So let's see if Brohammer can atone for his error and put the Red Sox ahead here. As Bobby Winkles is going to come to the mound, and that's going to do it for Wrinkle. For Rinko. So Elias Sosa will come in. He's made 32. He has 32 appearances on the season with a 1 on record and a 4.03 earn on average. So not nearly as many decisions as he did on the actual season. And not nearly as many innings pitched with only 45. So here's the pitch to Brohammer. It's going to be off the one column. Not a very good column for Brohammer. Come on, 10. And Brohammer is going to fly to center and that'll do it. So Brohammer aren't able to get the job done, but the Red Sox do score a run and tie the game at two as we head to the seventh. And we are going to do our switch here. We're going to take Brohammer out. I mean, we're going to take Hobson out. And we're going to bring in Remy for Hobson. We're going to bring Brohammer. Move him over to third. Remy, we're going to put in at second. There we go. All right, so Bruce Robinson to lead it off. He singled in the second and tripled in the fourth. But was doubled up in the fourth at third on a line drive down the line. It's going to be out the four column. And that's going to be a fly ball to Lynn at center. Range check. Lynn very short-handed. Gets in front of it. And makes the play for out number one. To one up and one down in the top of the seventh. And Mr. Brody is sawing some wood there. So Mira Guerrero up now. 0 for 1 with a sacrifice bunt. He lined into that double play, which Robinson has doubled up off the four column now. And that's another liner. This time the Brohammer makes the snag for out number two. And we have Taylor Duncan with two outs and the base is empty. He's grounded out twice today. And it's going to be a range check on Fisk. So it's going to be a foul out. And makes the catch. 10 the inning. So, 
Seventh inning stretch time here at Fenway Park. Here's a trivia question. Brought to you by Mr. Brody and Miss Mags and Purple Dinosaur this time. So what Montreal Expo player set the record for being hit by a pitch 50 times in a season? Ooh. I thought it was... I thought Don Baylor had that record, but I, but I didn't think he, pit, he played for the uh, Expos. Ooh, I don't know about that one. Could that be Andre Dawson? I don't think it's I don't think it's Guerrero. I wanna go with Andre Dawson, a the hawk there. So let's see what Expo player Oh, it could be is it Gary Carter? I don't think so. I wanna say it's Andre Dawson. I believe he had a tendency to be hit quite a bit by a pitch. So I'm gonna go with that. Lock in your answers. Here's the answer. Ron Hunt. So not even close on that one. <laughs> I would have never guessed that one. Ron Hunt set the record for being hit by a pitch 50 times in a season. Wow. So thank you, Mr. Brody and Miss Mags and Purple Dinosaur. That was a tough one. So now we're going to head to the home half of the seventh with the game tied at two now. Red Sox looking to extend their four-game winning streak and stay in the hunt. So Sosa back on for another inning of work. Burleson up now. He's one for two with a double. Also walked. And he's going to get a second hit as he sits a solid single up the middle. So the go-ahead run is on now for the Red Sox. Corners are playing in for Freddie Lynn. He's 0 for 3 on the day. Oh, and he's going to find that single on the three, column 3. We're going to hold Burleson at second. So first and second now with nobody out for Jim Rice. Rice singled in his last at bat. One for three. All off Rinko. Oh, and he hits in the one to Guerrero over to Edwards, the Reverend. So the Red Sox hit into another double play as Burleson moves to third. So the Red Sox have had a runners on. They just have hit into a double play with runners at first and second. I think it's at least for the second, if not the third time today. So Yastrzemski up for the chance to put the Red Sox ahead. Uh, it doesn't look like he's going to do it here unless he gets a range check. So five calm. And it is a range check on Edwards. So one to four will be a base hit and drive home that run. Gets in front of it. And he'll make the play. So the Red Sox squander another opportunity. And it remains tied at two as we head to the eighth. So attendance announced, 32,615. Good crowd. So Joe Wallace up now. One for two with a single. Right back out there once again. And this one's going to be hit to Remy. His first play takes a bad bounce, stays with it. Fires over to first for out number one. Mike Edwards up now. One for two officially. And he's going to get his second hit. A single pass Burleson. Falls in between Burleson and Rice. So one out single. Scott holds, holds him on. Brings up Dell Alston. Over three on the day. And it's going to be a hit and run. And that's going to be hit to first. Scott. Makes the catch. And Edwards gets back safely. So Texas, all of them are walking out 9-4. That's good news. Yankees continue to lead over Seattle 7-1. So Dave Revering up now. 1-3 for three with a single. Edwards is going to be off with the pitch. He's going to try to steal. Fist comes up firing. And he's in there. Wait, he's off the bag. And he's tagged out, so... Edwards had the base swipe, uh, had the base stolen, and he overslides the bag. And Remy stays with him and keeps the tag on, so he is out. So that'll do it for Oakland in the eighth. So it remains two two as we head to the ninth. So that could be a huge play there. So Colin Fiscal lead it off, over two with a run scored. 
Also walk once. And this time he strikes out swing. So one gone in the Red Sox eighth. Brings up the boomer. He's hit a solo home run back in the fourth and walked in the sixth. Both one for two with a homer. Oh. And Guerrero is under it and makes a play on the liner. Actually, a pop in the foul territory. So two down now for Dwight Evans. He's walked a couple of times today, officially 0 for 1. So we're going to pitch around Evans. It's going to be a curveball. And he'll take ball four. So Red Sox have a two out base runner. Brings up Jerry Remy getting his first at bat of the day. 293 with two homers and seven, 37 runs batted on the season. And he'll ground this one to Revering. He'll take it to the bag himself to end the inning. So we'll head to the ninth with the score knotted at two. So Jim Wright will at least come out to start the ninth. There is this action in the Red Sox bullpen. So Revering is one for three on the day. And he's going to be on with a leadoff single. So go ahead, run is on now. Oh, Rico Cardi up now. Yeah, we'll let him, we'll let right face him. Are you kidding? Oh, I thought they were going to replace Cardi. So the loan's going to come in. Very fast runner. And Wright fires over to first. And Jim Wright fires over to first and nabs the loan, the pinch runner off the base. Wow. So a couple base running blunders by the Athletics. One to end the eighth and now one here in the ninth as they had the go-ahead run on first with nobody out. And he gets picked off by Wright. So great play by Wright. And a very boneheaded play by DeLone. Wow. So Rico Cardi up to the plate now. He homered back in the first, one for three. And that's going to be a ground ball to Burleson. He should handle this one. And he will over to Scott for out number two. So, so a huge play by Jim right there, picking off the runner. So two outs of the base is empty for Page. Over three on the day. And it's going to be a range check on right. He'll get in front of it. And make the play over to Scott to end the inning. So we'll head to the bottom of the ninth. The Red Sox chance to win it as Jim Rice pitches nine, nine innings. So Brohammer up now. 0 for 3 on the day. And he'll line one to Edwards for the out number one. So the top of the order, Burleson up now. He's got a couple of hits on the day. 2 for 3 with a walk. And he'll get his third hit of the day. A single up the middle. So Alston will hold on. Oh, well, Alston's playing first now. Alston will hold on Burleson. Lynn one for four. He singled in his last at bat. And he is going to foul out. Robinson races over and makes a catch. A nice catch by Robinson for out number two. So Jim Rice with a chance to send the fans home happy here. One for four on the day. And he'll get it continue the inning at least. And we're going to hold Burleson at second. So first and second with one down. And Yastrzemski with a chance to be the hero. 0 for three with a walk. As, as Robinson goes out to talk to Sosa, goes back behind the plate. Sosa looks in for the sign, looks at the runners. He has the windup in the pitch. And after all that, Sosa is going to be pulled. <laughs> or Dave Hevelo, the closer for the A's, 9-2 and on the season. Having a fine season, actually, uh, record-wise. Seven saves. The area a little high, 
So he will looks in for the sign. Here's the windup and the pitch. And Yastrzemski gets a good one to hit here. And Yastrzemski is going to send this one into the gap. Burleson's going to come around and score. And the Red Sox are going to have a walk-off victory. Thanks to the captain, Carl Yastrzemski comes through in the clutch. And the Red Sox win in an exciting fashion, 3-2. to two, As Jim Wright gets a complete game victory. Wow. So an exciting finish here at Fenway. Mr. Brody Sarah coming all the time. He was, faith, he was confident that the Red Sox would come back. And they did. So an exciting victory here today as the Red Sox have now won five in a row. So Jim Wright pitches a complete game. Who would have thunk that? Goes to nine and eight. Nine innings pitched, eight hits allowed, two runs. Only one of the runs was earned. No walks and two strikeouts. So a fine performance by Jim Wright. Steve Wrinkle pitched five and two-thirds innings. Allowed five hits, two runs. Both of them earned. Walk six batters. That's what did him in. One strikeout and a home run to George Scott. Left with... Left, um, no, it didn't leave with the lead. Left with a tie score. So Elias Sosa gets the loss. He's one and two. Three innings pitched, four hits allowed, one run. It was earned. One walk and one strikeout. And Dave Heverlow allowed one hit. And that would be the game winner by Yastrzemski. So for the Red Sox, Rick Burleson, three for four of the run scored. Freddie Lynn, one for five. Two for five for Rice. Yastrzemski, one for four with an RBI. Fisk, 0 for three with a run uh, that run scored. George Scott, one, one for three with a solo homer. Evans, 0 for one. I think he walked three times today. Um, Hobson, two for three with an RBI. That was a big RBI. Remy 0 for 1 and Jack Bohammer 0 for 4. The Athletics, Del Alston 0 for 4. Rebring 2 for 4. Delone with a huge pick, uh, pin, he was a pinch runner and we got a huge pick off of him in the ninth. Rico Cardi 1 for 4 with a solo home run. Mitchell Page 0 for 4. Bruce Robinson 2 for 3 with a run scored. Guerrero 0 for 2. Duncan 0 for 3. Wallace 1 for 3. Mike Edwards 2 for 3. So player of the game. Oh boy. I think we got to give it to Jim Wright. Pitched a complete game. Allowed only one earned run. Struck out two batters. Didn't walk anybody. A close runner up to the captain. Kyle Yastrzemski for his game-winning single there in the ninth. So that is it, as the Red Sox have now, like I said, now won is it four in a row or five in a row? This might be five in a row. So let's check out their standings here. Oops. As things got even tighter here. So... The Red Sox have vaulted into second place now. It's still one and a half games behind the Yankees as the Yankees did end up winning their third in a row. Red Sox, yeah, Red Sox have now won five in a row. Their record is 82 and 52. So there's, I mean, 81 and 54. So they're still four games behind their pace, but not bad. The Yankees three games ahead of their pace. Milwaukee with the loss. Still three games ahead of their pace. So Milwaukee has now lost four in a row. So Milwaukee has hit a slump. Now we just need the Yankees to hit a slump. So just one and a half games out of first place. So things really tight. First time we've been in second place in a while. So hopefully we can get into first place before long. So in the AL West, Kansas City now with a four and a half game lead over Texas and California has dropped to third place. So the Angels have lost. Well, they just lost one in a row. But Kansas City has 
won six in a row. So Kansas City's been on fire. Texas also pretty much on fire as they've won four in a row. So again, things tightening up. In the AL East, we'll check out and see who the games are coming up here. Actually, we'll just let you know. Actually, yeah, we'll check it here. We don't have to sim anything, but... Ooh, we don't want to unschedule and schedule. So, let's see. The Red Sox will start a series with the Orioles in Baltimore at Memorial Stadium. The Yankees will start. We'll have a doubleheader tomorrow at Yankee Stadium against the Detroit Tigers. And... Milwaukee also with a doubleheader. So things could get interesting here as both New York and Milwaukee have double headers. So best case scenario, Yankees lose both games. Red Sox win their game. And the Red Sox would pick up a game and a half and be tied with the Yankees for first place. So go Tigers. And Milwaukee, as long as, well, if they, if they win both of their games, they'll be tied with us. And and we win ours, so they most they can gain is a half game on us. But if Milwaukee loses two more, they could drop even further behind. So some big games coming up. We'll keep an eye on those. We'll definitely be watching those games as we play our game against the Orioles. And let's just yeah, we don't. I'll let you know who's uh, pitching tomorrow. I don't want to send any of the games yet to show you the results. We'll keep that a secret. So. This is going to be Monday, September 4th and against the Orioles. And it's going to be Dennis Eckersley on the hill for the Red Sox. I think he might be going for his 20th win. I'm not sure, though. I know he's getting close to that. Um, against Scott McGregor for the Orioles. So good pitching matchup there. So Eckersley. And the Red Sox did lose this game, so they can pick up a game... A better they a game better on their record if they can get a victory here. So anyway, so thank you for joining me. It's my Eric from Higher Ground Gaming, my co-host Mr. Brody. And we will see you in the next series. And the Red Sox start a series with the Baltimore Orioles hoping to get that much closer to first place. So don't miss it. Take care and God bless. Bye bye now.